Welcome back. Well, as I mentioned off the top, John Kerry flew into Ottawa for a six-hour tour, which included a visit to the National War Memorial and a tour of the center block. Here's a clip from the Secretary of State's news conference earlier today. It's an honor for me to be here, a privilege for me to represent uh, President Obama, the United States of America, and all American citizens in expressing our deep solidarity with our country's closest ally. Just as you have so often stood with us, we're proud to be here standing with you today. Let's bring in our favorite MPs for a reunion chat about this and other percolating issues on Parliament Hill. NDP Deputy Leader Megan Leslie, Liberal Everywhere MP Roger Kuzner, and back again, finally, Conservative Finance Committee Chair James Rajat. I guess you've been doing all, you know, the good work out there trying to figure out ways to give us money back, right, for election bribery purposes. No, we're, we're oh, going to... Oh, my God. <laughs> so many so sharp today. How did you get to be so cynical? I'm not cynical. The Finance Committee looks at, you know, very good submissions <laughs> on allocating resources, paying down our debt, and, uh, you I'm know, sorry reducing Canadians' taxes. Now that I think about it, I didn't ask. Let's move yeah. along. <laughs> it's, uh... John Kerry. John Kerry comes here. He is very warm and friendly, warmer than I've seen any Americans for a long time come in here. So warm, I thought maybe a minute there he's going to approve the Keystone XL pipeline, <laughs> but he didn't. So what are we taking away? Is Canada entering a new era of cooperation with the Americans in your view, James? Well, I think obviously the era of cooperation, but I think we have to recognize, I mean, this is probably the best, long, most long-lasting relationship between two countries in human history in terms of from a positive point of view. And if, if you look at what we did in response to some September the 11th, I mean, especially in the East Coast, you know, I mean, the, the response that those communities did in terms of Americans and, and allowing a lot of uh, planes in, in the United States airspace to land there, welcoming them, the support we showed for uh, people in the United States, I mean, I think they're, they're returning the, mm -hmm. the camaraderie. So I think this is such a good relationship, but obviously in terms of facing new threats of ISIL, um, facing Russian aggression in Ukraine, we're very much on the same page in terms of the government here, the administration there, and the two Parliament and Congress. So it, it is an era of cooperation that will continue. We haven't seen this since Mulroney and Reagan did when Irish eyes were smiling. Okay, Megan, do you think this is a new era, or do you think it's just a temporary blip and we'll go back to new, being kind of cool? New era. Um, well, I think it's really nice that uh, John Kerry came up as Secretary of State um, and sort of be in solidarity with us after uh, what happened. Jeez, right right behind us a week mm -hmm. ago. Um, do I think it's a new era? I'm unsure. Uh, it has been a bit of a cool relationship lately, but there are a lot of issues happening in the world where it makes good sense for Canada and the U.S. to, to be working together. I mean, if we look at the uh, Ebola crisis, if we look at, we are talking about security. I don't mm -hmm. want to overblow uh, what happened last week and, and start talking about terrorism, but we are talking security these days, and we got the longest border in the world. So it makes good sense that... Uh, um, John Kerry would come and maybe try and reopen that dialogue. I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful it's a new era of a uh, little more warmth. Okay. Where the permafrost is thawing, uh, Roger? <laughs> I, you know, it's, it's always, it's been a, a relationship that's, you know, been ongoing. And, and you know, some of you talked about the softwood lumber, you know, th that's been a, an issue that's been ongoing for forever and ever. Uh, with Kerry coming today, I didn't get to see too much of the, the, the visit, but uh, I would hope he had an opportunity to share with uh, Minister Baird, you know, that when John Kerry ran for president, uh, one, of, one of his planks on his platform was that uh, he was going to revamp the Patriot Act because of the number of infringements on civil liberties. I, w you know, we don't know what's going to happen here in the wake of, uh, you know, with the new legislation mm -hmm. coming forward, but uh, uh, it, it's, it's, it's interesting how things have evolved over the over the last number of years i know the middle east some people look at uh, um, you know the united states having a more measured approach to the middle east than canada now so those, those things have sort of changed but uh, I, I think that both uh, megan and uh, and james are right and megan you uh Tomorrow, you made reference to this it's a week ago, tomorrow, that uh, we had this gunman burst in. Tomorrow, you all go back to the caucus rooms you were in a week ago. Mm -hmm. Is it going to be difficult to go in there? What's going to be going through your minds when you re-enter that room where, I mean, there's a bullet hole in the yeah. NDP caucus meeting door that goes right through the wood? It sure is. It was a pretty tough week 
for everybody. And, and I'm not just talking MPs, right? Um, the cafeteria staff are, mm. are wheeling trays of coffee past those bullet holes. And uh, we had uh, staff hiding behind uh, plywood desks in the, in the Hall of Honor. It, it's been a tough week for everybody. Um, I don't know what tomorrow is going to be like mm. to walk in that room. I, there's a real reaction that happens with something like that where there's this adrenaline going through our bodies, right? And it's in us, no matter where we were that day, probably you as well. Um, uh, I was here. sitting up here. You I were was sitting safe. Up here. <laughs> you were safe, but there was a lot of adrenaline mm -hmm. and, and it's coming out in different ways and at different times. Some people were uh, traumatized as it was happening. Other people, it took a few days for it to, them, mm. for it to hit them. Um, I don't know what is going to hold for us tomorrow walking in that room a week later, but I'll tell you, we're being pretty gentle with ourselves. We're allowing for uh, if people are not feeling up for it or if people are, are having some issues, we're trying, mm -hmm. to be, we're trying to be gentle. Good. James? Well, and, and Megan makes a very good point. I mean, it wasn't just members of Parliament. It was the entire staff of, of Parliament, which is a bit of a family here mm -hmm. that has had to deal with this. It was, I don't uh, have any shame in saying it was an absolutely terrifying experience for me. I'll never forget the sound of gunshots right behind my head just outside the caucus room. But, you know, we have to carry on. We have to show that an act like this cannot stop parliamentary debate from occurring. And, and this is our national parliament that has to continue on. I mean, uh, today the Finance Committee, our committee is actually meeting in, in where the NDP caucus meets. Mm -hmm. And yesterday we met where the Conservative caucus meets. And it was, it was a bit different being in the room, but it was nice to have a good, thoughtful discussion in a room and the end of the meeting happened, I banged the gavel and that was it and we all... Left. You know, there is a lot of family sense going on, but I sense the family might split apart sooner rather than later. Do you think this, this relationship will last, Roger? Or this calm, fairly friendly tone? Statements, member statements are actually not you know, the, the, vitriolic the, the, assaults anymore. <laughs> I'm sure it'll, it'll continue to sort of move down. I, uh, you mentioned family though, I, I got a note from uh, uh, two constituents of mine, Millers from uh, Northeast Marguerite, and their daughter Lana works in the uh, library, and she was in. Oh, wow. uh, I had an opportunity to pop in today and just uh, have a quick chat with her, but, uh, you know, a lot of people were touched by this, and, and as Megan had said, you know, there's a, there's a physical way that this sort of, you, you see it evolve, but, you know, mentally, emotionally, spiritually for some people, it, 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 it sort of has a, a genesis. So I, I think things will sort of drift back. We, you know, we ended up picking up a 450-page uh, omnibus budget, so things are back to normal in that. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, we, you, you, your comments where you said we spoke with one voice last Wednesday, we're speaking with one voice now. It's Stephen Harper's voice, so, you know, that's... Oh, uh, no, no, I... <laughs> there goes the family reunion. We heard that everybody wanted to get back to work, so we wanted he to... Gave of uh, budget bill on the table. <laughs> you know what? So it's Thursday. It's the day after, right? It's pretty big trauma. And I get a note from our research team saying, here's, uh, here's the work that we've done on the budget bill and what's in it. And I was like, budget bill? Oh, my God. So, yeah, things are back to normal. We have an omnibus budget, uh, like Roger speaking, pointed out. And speaking of normal, parliamentary budget officers come up with a report that says there's not enough money to build the ships that you have in the budget, six to eight. He says there's only enough for four Arctic patrol boats, uh, and only 50% chance those vessels will get built on budget. He says down to three. The government's response, uh, you got the wrong numbers. Your numbers aren't good. The parliamentary budget officer's response is... Uh, he wouldn't give me the num they wouldn't give us the numbers. So I guess that's back to normal. Roger? <laughs> <laughs> the minister answered the question today. She says, you know, we, we don't trust the numbers of the uh, parliamentary budget officer. Yeah, because you haven't given them any numbers sort of thing. <laughs> so a hey, good buddy of mine, Archie Campbell, I, I thought it, it was uh, pretty astute on his part. He said we should get pizza pizza to do the procurement for the federal government because they usually know how many pizzas are going to arrive at your door and they're usually delivered on time. I got to so move along. <laughs> <laughs> your pizza. Seriously, I mean, come on. Like you're, you're comparing Arctic ships to pizzas now? It is a little more complicated to make a, a patrol yeah. ship. But we've gone from six to eight down to four. Uh, this isn't just about a couple of boats, right? This is about uh, our Arctic sovereignty. We've gone from icebreakers to boats that are ice capable. Uh, this is also about jobs. I mean, the, the shipyards have been uh, a part of a really good process at the beginning. And now what's going to happen? Are these jobs actually going to come through? This is about our economy. This is about our readiness 
for our military. I mean, there's a lot at stake here. I can't believe You've they're messing it up. You've got 30 seconds. I'm well, almost out of time. This was part of the counter first defense strategy. The, the move from icebreakers to Arctic ships was not only to have ships that are capable in terms of uh, ice, but also in terms of ships that can cover a greater length in terms of the coastline. They will obviously be um, capable in terms of combat. Um, so these are scheduled to start in 2015. As the minister indicated, that is still the timeline. Mm -hmm. And as she indicated in the House today, there's still the timeline and the budget to do six ships and with six to eight plan. So we're we'll still... See. We're still seeing it. Um, we'll have the parliamentary budget officer <laughs> shortly sure. before the finance committee. We'll and you'll give him a hard follow. time, right? We'll not right. give him a hard time. We'll ask him very substantive uh, <laughs> questions on this matter. Thank you all. We'll see and you others. next week.